Howdy, my name is Jackson Kane. Welcome back to Dream Daddy. Last time we had our lovely, sexy date with our big old man boy, Craig Alicious. Uh, I don't know if I'm still going to continue down the Craig path because I don't know how the game diverges from here. If I just continue down the Craig path, does it end when I finish that, or should I go on some other dates with some other people? But does that mess me up with Craig? I don't know. That's why I didn't sleep with Robert at the start of the game either. So. Let's see what happens. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I- oh, word jumbles. I hear the mail truck pull up through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. Stop being a dad! The nice mail person slides a couple letters and a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Hey! My coupons. I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. A lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? <laughs> I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay, just thought you'd want this big old envelope. Oh, well, I found with H I A. Yes. Hey, <laughs> yes. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Some people had said I saw. In the comments, they said they didn't like my voice for Amanda, which is fine. You don't have to like any of the voices that I do for any of the characters. But uh, some of the reasoning I have for giving her that voice was that her her like voice sample in the game like that, yes, kind of sounds like, hey, this is my voice. I'm kind of like, hey, what's up? Kind of like a sparky, punky little girl, which I like. I like the voice I gave her. I think it suits her very well. Um, some people just thought it, it made her sound too whiny and they really liked the character. My, my intention is not to make her whiny. And I love the character. She's my favorite character in the game. So I'm right there with you. Or an institute for the arts. I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. <laughs> Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. Ah, that's my girl. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of the envelope. <laughs> she pulls out a letter and unfolds it. And? The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school, and I'm the dream daddy. Amanda's face is unreadable. Maybe because it's a face and no words are written on it. I can't believe this. Oh, honey. Right. It's okay if you- I got in! Oh! I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie! That's amazing! I'm so proud of you. <laughs> she pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god. I really can't believe I got in. Aww. Good job, Manda Panda! Oh, I just realized she has a panda on her pins. Manda Panda. Makes sense, it's all coming together. Well, of course you got in, you're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. Aww. Wait, Dad. Aww. I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. I think for a moment. HIA, which I'm going to pronounce as HIA, <laughs> was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to. But I know she's had her heart set in it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. What a good mm. dad. Really? Of course! Amanda hugs yes. me again. Yes! Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie. We're celebrating tonight. Dinner. Your choice. Wherever you want. Please say pizza. <laughs> Wherever. Amanda and I walk along the bay. That was fucking quick. Okay, we're there! Walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil-wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. I- I- my heart- my heart- my heart set in pizza. I love pizza, but I've had it the last two days in a row. So, burritos, excellent choice. That's my girl. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad. You know I'm a simple gal. Just rem just give me a burrito with a view. But what about some za? I can't say I'm mad. Burrito's pretty fucking good. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. Yeah. It's nice music. Yeah. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes. And there are all these galleries nearby. And there's a discount if you want to bring your student ID. Amanda, slow down. You're going to choke on your burrito. I know. I'm just excited. And I mentioned that students get their own studio space once they're seniors and we get all the professional photo editing software for free. That's pretty fucking cool. I miss that aspect of college because when I went to college, I was 18. 
Well, the first time I went to college, I was 18. And when, when I was that age, it was a case of like, oh, I'm finally away from home for the first time, and I get to do all these things. And I didn't fully envelop myself in, like, the software, because I was doing music pro production. So I didn't envelop myself in the studio aspect of things, mainly because they were always hired out. But I was always like, oh, I have all these new friends and this new place to explore, and all these cool new things are going on. And I just wanted to play drums all the time, so... I don't think I fully took advantage of the college space when I was there. So you should, if you're going to college for something that you actually really like, you should definitely take advantage of all that stuff. Because the friends and everything will happen naturally anyway. But the college, like, work side of things, you don't often get to do that. So it's pretty cool. And then I went back to college again for hotel management, but I went back for... Because I just wanted a simple, easy degree. So I didn't really get involved in that, that much either, so... I don't know, my college life is a bit all over the place. It's nice to see Amanda so, so enthusiastic on- Yeah! But I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her how to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with a similar major and interests? I bet we're gonna be best friends. That's actually pretty cool. Greg and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. Also, a fucking bro, dude. <laughs> then you can meet him later on and kiss him and see him shirtless and maybe fuck him a little? I don't know. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig bought home, brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Carol ruled. Alright! <laughs> right. Ooh! They let you have animals in dorms if you get a note saying you need one? I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit. Or maybe a snake. Or maybe both. Would the snake eat the rabbit though? Probably. Oh boy. I think I'll leave that up to you. I'm glad that the dad is like, I'll leave that up to you instead of being like, don't forge things. He's not being an overruly dad, he's just being a supportive one. My man. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had a talk with that Mr. Vega. Hmm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? <laughs> a, a dumpster fire? What? No! What dumpster fire? We get back to that, whatever. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but... I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. That's a lot of pressure. She's already looking like she's dead, but... Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back, then on the head, then kiss her on the forehead. <laughs> Think you can handle a 14-hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's going to be some treacherous ice roads to cross. That's the weird thing as well. Because America's so big. And I always hear about students going away to like faraway colleges. And then they come home for the holidays. When I was in college, because Ireland's not that big. You can actually cross Ireland left to right in about four hours. Or top to bottom in about five or six. I don't know the actual times. But my college was like an hour and a half away. The first college I went to, so I would go back every weekend. It wasn't just going back for the holidays, it was going back and forth all the time. And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. Oh, my eyes immediately well up with tears. <laughs> hmm. Oh, Dad, don't cry. No, I'm not. I'm sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, you're such a good person. I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop, you're gonna make me cry too. And me! <laughs> Guys, it's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's gonna make it taste sad. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. I knew I'd kiss her on the forehead. Love you, kiddo. Love you too, pops. Aw. I actually kind of teared up there for a second. You guys are gonna make me cry. You've got oh, my best favorite part of the game is when I get to be with all the dads. So, I could go with Craig again. And I kind of want to just to progress that path. But I kind of want to try out somebody else. I'm re I really want to see what the date with Brian is like. 
He came off a little strong, talking about his daughter a lot, but he's so big and burly and hairy and ginger beardy and I love him! He's a big old bear! Hmm. Could go with Matt, cause he's like, Hey, I'm Matt. How's it going? Like, Matt could just talk his way into your pants. That's all he needs to do. Brian, he can look his way into your pants. And Craig, you're already in my pants, dude. Um... I know a lot of you probably want me to continue to continue down the Craig path, and I probably will. That's probably the dad that I'm going to end up with. But I kind of want to give Brian a shot. Or will that mess me up with Craig? Because if then, I won't. I just want to try it out. We'll come to Craig again another time. Hey, I'm Brian. I spend most of my days hanging out with my awesome daughter and thinking up of new ways to grill things. If you like fishing, then we'll get along. Hmm. On a Friday night, you were most likely to see just how slowly I could cook a piece of brisket. So you're the one with all the steak options then. And all the grill options. I thought that was going to be Joseph because he was the master griller. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? My fishing pole. I think that's a euphemism, so I let that one slide. What are your turn-ons? Please say me. Please say me. A keen understanding of steak cuts. Oh, I'm a big fan of the rump. <laughs> that actually went with the music, the little tink came out. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? Fireman. Okay. You're a hot, sexy piece of ass. You're on fire? Does that count? I don't know. And your ginger hair makes it look like your head's on fire. What's your favorite movie genre? Romantic comedies. Hmm. Brian, I really fucking wanna like you. What's your ideal date? Deck building. There's two different types of deck building to me. Are we talking about like hammer, nails, wood at the back of your house? Are we talking about some like Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic the Gathering kind of deck building? Some Hearthstone? Cause then I'd kind of lean more towards you, but I think you're talking about deck building as in like using your hands, which, I'm, which is fine. It's just, I like card games. What do you never leave home without? My portable fishing pole. Brian, why? Why do you have to be like a guy's guy? The stereotypical like, Hey, I like doing things with my hands because I'm burly. I spend a lot of time thinking about how my daughter is smarter than I am. Oh. Let's go back and read some others. Avid music enthusiast. Oh wait, they all have second names. Matt Sella. Uh, I want to go back. What's Brian's second name? Brian Harding. Hmm. Brian, you're making me Harding. Robert Small. They, oh, fucking nothing small about that big boy. Damien Bloodmarch. I knew you had a vampire look about you. You literally look like you're dressed like Alucard from Castlevania. Which is Dracula backwards. Hugo Vega, I knew that. And Joseph Christensen. With Chris, Kristen, and Christian Chrysanthemum and Blossoms. <laughs> That's the name of your kids, right? Okay, let's let's read Matt. Avid music enthusiast. Passionate coffee drinker. Ooh. Those are two things that are near and dear to my heart. You can find me most days selling bean juice over at the old coffee spoon. Oh, that fucking good old dirty bean water. Or hanging out at the park with my amazing daughter. Hit me up about 80s no wave music. Guys, Matt's looking a bit... Matt's really... selling himself... to me. On a Friday night, you were most likely to perfect my cold brew setup. One drip at a time, baby. Okay, a little hipster, but it's about coffee, so... I let it go. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? Fine tunes that pass the days away. Oh, my dude! Oh, yes! I have an itchy eye! If, if you had a voice in the game, by like a professional voice actor, I'd say... Or like someone who's in the business and big high up one, I'd say Phil Lamar would suit you very well. Um, what are your turn-ons? Multi-instrumentalism. Dude, you must be like really into dream theater or rush. What did you want to be when you grew up? A barista, weirdly enough. Okay, whatever. I'm not gonna shit on your dreams, but maybe aim a little higher. What's your favorite movie genre? Shit with subtitles. Okay, that's not really a genre. That's just foreign movies, which to other people are just movies. <laughs> What's your ideal day? We go to the animal shelter and seriously consider adopting a cat. Ooh! 
If that had said puppy, I might have just had to go on a date with you right then and there. Don't get me wrong, cats are awesome. Cat I love how bouncy and like agile they are. I if I wanted to be an animal, a cat would be one of them. Because then I'd be able to sprint around the place and see in the dark and be all like... Cats are kind of like Spider-Man-y. They're very agile and bouncy. But cats, I'm kind of allergic to them. If a cat scratches me, I get like a big old like... Bubble on my hand and I if a cat licks me I get like a rash or if I'm around them for like Like extended hours like if I lived with a cat I get very like bunged up um, But puppies and dogs I love so much more as pets because they're so loyal and awesome and they play a lot cats are just assholes What do you never leave home without my headphones both in ear and over ear just in case I spent a lot of time thinking about where did writing commas into song titles come from and where did it go? Where did it come from? Cotton Eye Joe? Did we all just agree that that's a bad idea? Okay, maybe not. Let's go with Brian. I want to go with Brian just to see what a date with him is like. I hope he takes his shirt off. Drink plenty of water. Good tip. Don't have any water with me here now. Man, I don't know how I feel about hanging out with Brian more, but it seems like Daisy and Amanda get along really well. Maybe I should just bite the penis. Bullet! And hang out with Brian for the sake of the kids. Okay. I crack my knuckles. Uh, I already cracked them. And start typing. But well, that's what you don't realize is that under my screen or under the, the camera frame all the time, I'm always cracking my knuckles. Oh shit. Hey Brian, great grabbing burgers with you at the old cookaroo yesterday. We should get the kids together and chill. I'm making myself sound cooler because I don't come across cool here. I wait a couple of minutes until ding! Comes from the computer. Computer. I can't talk! And a message pops up on screen. It's Brian. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, hey, man. Always love a good burg with a buddy. I call it burgering. <laughs> we should definitely hang out. What do you think about mini golf? Ooh, I love mini golf. We could bring the girls out and have ourselves a friendly competition. Rock on, Brian. Just gonna flex. Just gonna flex on them haters right now, you know? That's what, that's what we'll do from now on. Fuck dabbing on them haters. Let's flex on them haters. Flex on, flex on swole like, uh huh. You know? Just realized that I've sang Kendrick twice in this series so far. It's always a good series when you can sing out some Kung Fu Kenny, some K Dot. Friendly competition? This is perfect. I know Amanda and I will crush Brian into dust. I've been taking her to mini golf courses since she was a wee little lass, and I'm proud to say that she's almost better than I am. Almost. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Have you noticed a pattern? Every time I say something myself, the characters do it like two seconds later. I am this dad. This dad is me. And Amanda as well. I love it. This is my real life. <laughs> I type back. That sounds great, man. Name the time and place, and I'll crush your nuts any day of the week. <laughs> hey, Amanda. Hey, would you be up for some mini golf for Brian and Daisy? Oh. I'm a little out of practice, and I know my backswing leaves something to be desired, but I think I could keep it in the negatives. <laughs> I love the way she talks. It's not, it's not like, I think I could do okay. It's like, I think I could keep it in the negatives. I think I could keep it under par. Perfect. Come on, kiddio. Kitty Let's do this. I can't talk. Oh, that's cool. You ready for this? Yeah. Arr, matey. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Why are you talking like that? Mm. Because this mini golf course is pirate themed. I just now realize that we are indeed standing on top of a giant pirate ship in the middle of a putt-putt course. You're not very, uh, observant. Hey. Oh, come on, pirate dad. Won't you talk like a pirate with me, arr, ahoy, um, uh, scurvy? I don't see parts, only angles. Avast ye scurvy dogs! I'll make Brian and Daisy walk the plank with my superior golfing abilities. I mean, a uh, doubloon! Huh? I'm Irish, so I can do a piratey kind of voice a bit easier. It's in the accent, it's built in. It's like when you have like a, a, a studio mixer and has like all these effects built in. I can just turn it and I'm an arr pirate. Come on, dad. You told me that this was just gonna be some friendly competition. Friendly competition is dad code for actual competition. I need to prepare me body, mind, and soul to defeat Brian on the field of glorious battle. 
I'm gonna get me some of that booty. And this time I'm not talking about the blues. Hmm. It's just mini golf. Just mini golf, he say. It's so much more than that. He's probably stopped talking like a pirate by now, but I just like the voice. I kneel down and place a hand on Amanda's shoulder. I just want you to know that there's no pressure. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it too much. But we have to beat Brian at mini golf. Whatever happened to just having fun? Oh, we'll have fun real soon. When we beat them, Amanda gives me a side eye. But before a side eye emoji? But before I can side eye her back, I spot Brian and Daisy. Uh -huh. Ahoy there, mateys! Uh, ahoy. I don't know why I give her like a sort of Southern Belle voice. And then he's just like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> just make him sound like Popeye. <laughs> Brian walks up with Daisy in tow. It looks like they already rented us some golf clubs for our mini golf excursion. Total power move. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> All right, first, mate. I hear there's buried treasure in these here waters. You gonna help me plunder it? Oh, Amanda, I don't think this is a real pirate ship. I think it's just to play putt-putt on. Dad. Amanda gives Daisy a look. Hmm. We seen Dad! Is she your dad now? I mean, aye, aye, Cap'n. Daisy winks at Amanda. Uh -huh. Ah, look at these two. Just a couple of old gals. They're two peas in a big old green pod. So, you excited to get some mini golf in? Oh, you fucking know it, B Dog. What's up? You wanna go, B Man? You wanna you wanna fucking throw it out? I'll I'll do it right here, right now. Dicks out. Even though you're quite a substantially large man, so you probably have a giant peen. Oh, you know it. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> you a gambling man? We're not doing this. We're not gambling. Depending on what's on the table. Do I get you if I win? Power move. No. I know when to hold him. Depends on what's on the table. I don't want to gamble! What are you willing to part with? <laughs> how about the loser buys drinks tonight? <laughs> Alright, but how about we make it a bit more interesting? I'm listening. The loser has to mow the winner's lawn this weekend. <laughs> Well, my yard's pretty big. Are you prepared to take that on? I think you should be a little more concerned with how you're going to maneuver around my hedges. It's highly technical work. Not for the faint of heart. And not for the heart of faint. You know, uh, not for the, the taint of fart. Also, you need a bit more of a delicate touch. Don't know if you're into that, Brian. Aww. I don't think I'll need to worry about that. I'm very good at mini golf, you know. Oh yeah? Hole in one. Every time. I ain't talk about mini golf no more. Talk about that hole in one? Yeah! <laughs> hole in one with my club? You know? It's a euphemism. Go to fuck a dad. What I just said is not a true thing, but it already came out of my mouth, so I have to stand by it. I'm looking forward to seeing that happen. Brian and I eye each other up and down. You good, bro? May the best dad win. Brian and I shake hands and lock eyes. It's about to go down. Okay, not really enjoying this. I actually get to play golf. Oh fuck. What's up, bitch? What's up? You want to fucking? Come on! Game's fucking rigged. Game's a piece of shit. Into the ride. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Brian? What's up, Brian? You wanna go? You wanna fucking tussle with Jack Dad? Okay, pride comes before the fall. You lost your ball. <laughs> ha! Come on! That was clearly in! Ref! Ref! You lost your ball. You don't get one shot in golf, you get a bunch! Fuck my ass! Actually, no! Dead men sink no pots. Oh, balls. I'm gonna have to, like. Ah! That was terrible! What are we doing? Get your head in the game! Get a grip! Get a grip! I don't know why I thought that was gonna work. Dead men sink no pots. It was going so well. 
It was going so well. Amanda pulls me aside while Brian and Daisy start walking to the next huh? hall. Hey, you having a good time? I'm having a great time! I'm having a fantastic time trying to destroy Brian underfoot! Does it not look like I'm having a good time? Hmm. I just asked because your eye is twitching. But, uh, no it's not! What are you talking about? I'm fine! I feel my left eye twitch. Amanda raises her eyebrows. Hmm? We're out here to have fun, remember? It's just a game. You're right. It's just a game. A game with extremely high stakes that we are currently losing, Amanda! Dad! Please, Amanda. Please nail this next hole for me. I need your help now more than ever. Ah. If it's really that important to you, sure. Amanda walks over and tees up for a particularly hard windmill hole. Gripping her club, she winds up and... Launches the ball into the parking lot! She looks me right in the eye and does an exaggerated shrug. Eh! Like the reaper shrug. Mm. Oops. I disagree with her actions, but I appreciate her act of youthful defiance. That's my girl. Can't be mad when I see so much passion in her. She walks over and pats me on the back. That was for your own good. <sighs> Love you, kiddo. Can the date be over now? Fuck. Fuck. Into the brine. She gave me power. Amanda gave me power. Uh oh. Yeah! How? Shit's going down now, Brainio. Oh, you're so close, my pride. Oh, but they sure fuck some dads. Uh oh, all the way back, all the way back. Just oh. Your ball. Fucking, you trying to emasculate me? Fuck. Suck my dad dick. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Shame. Shame it washes over the land. No this is bad. This is just- you know what, fuck it. We're just here to have some fun, right? Just here to have some fun! Just here to have some fun! Lost your ball. At this rate, I'm just fucking firing blindly. Padoosh! What's up with that? What's up with that? Why? 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 I'm not reading your dad tip. I'm upset. I try to maintain an air of professionalism because there are children present. But I can feel the crushing weight of the four dads before me casting a disappointed look upon my broken frame. I have failed you fathers. And for that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, senpai. I'm sorry, master sensei. I must ask for your forgiveness. Man, that was some good shooting there, Jack. I fought valiantly and my only regret was being bested. Be like Sir Alistair. I fought and I lost. I have lost. I have lost lost at put put. <laughs> Mini golf is beneath me. No, I'm just going to say I have lost lost at put put. I'm sorry, sorry. Amanda groans. Yeah. Arr, Daisy, did you have a good time? Yo ho ho, I did. We haven't even found the buried treasure yet. Oh, the wrong voice. Ah, uh, shit. I think we would need to apply for a permit to dig around here. Oh. I can take Daisy home so we can get the city paperwork started for digging. You two go enjoy your night. I don't know if I want to. He beat me. What am I supposed to do now? Just suck it up and... Ah. Sounds like a plan. Jack, you cool with that? Sure. Just don't get yourselves into too much yeah. trouble. <laughs> Can do. I make sure we get into a perfectly reasonable amount of trouble. Amanda and Daisy skip away, yelling about buried treasure. Isn't Amanda 18 and Daisy's 10? Or 11? That's a bit weird, but whatever. You guys have fun. Bless that kid's tiny rebellious heart. Ah. Well, guess we should hit the bar now. <laughs> There's actually a tiki bar attached to this place. How about that? That sounds like a plan, old B. Ryan. Guess I'm spending more time with Brian, which I'm not jazzed about considering I just completely blew it on the put-put course. Okay, Dad, you can do this. I just gotta drown my sores in some tropical loser drink and get out of here. Yeah, not feeling this state. I kinda just wanna go home, curl up, and be embraced by Craig. 
That was much nicer. We just hung out and shot the shit. I didn't have to prove myself to anybody there. Fuck. Brian and I walk into the Freaky Tiki, a kitschy island themed bar. Palm trees adorn the walls and several fake parts are strewn about. Ukulele music plays softly in the background. Brian and I approach the bamboo bar. <laughs> Two, uh, Pineapples of hospitality, please. The bartender whips us up two rum drinks inside the hollowed out pineapples. He sets them on fire, and we have to blow them out before we can drink them. <sighs> Fuck! Jesus! Christ! The oh! <sighs> Christ! Okay, it's out. Ooh, fruity. <laughs> Usually I like to, uh, I don't know, drink my drinks? If you don't want yours, I'll take it. <laughs> and best me again? I think not. I take a sip of my pineapple hospitality. Sorrow. Tastes fruity. See, I told you. Tastes fruity. I just said that. My lawn care needs are very particular. I hope you're up for the challenge. Oh, don't worry. I'll bring my old salt to promote healthy growth in a sustainable environment. Bring a bag of lime. Bring some, like, weed killer. <laughs> oh, come on now, Jack. I'm just having a little fun with you. You're like twice the size of me. I grumble and sip more of my fruity sorrow drink. Fine, fine, you got me on this one. While I sip more of my drink, I notice a TV in the corner. Hey, Extreme Makeover, Deck Edition is on. I love this show. Always made me want to own a deck. Ugh, I hate this show. Why? It's so clearly fake. Come on, man, I'm trying to have a nice date, I'm trying to have a nice time, but you're trying to fuck me over all the times so and not in the good way, that's awesome. Well, yeah, it's reality TV. Who cares? I care! I'm a general contractor. I work with decks all the time. There's no way they're renovating those decks in a matter of two days. It's impossible. There's a three-week job minimum. So you wanted to cover those three weeks extensively in every episode? It can't be that interesting to watch a bunch of dudes slave over a deck for that long. Nobody would watch it. Aww. I don't like any of those home improvement shows. I want to watch stuff that's real. Like long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers? Oh. I have terrible news for you, Jack. No. No. Not them two. That's the awful truth. Not the ghosts, though. Those are real. Trucks just don't have that have emergency escape buttons. I've been lied to for so long. I shouldn't have come out on this date. I shouldn't have come out on the date with the big old burly dad. Appearances are deceptive. Don't meet your heroes, you'll only be disappointed. Motherfucker. We both chuckle and sip on our pineapples. So wait, you're a general uh, contractor? Sure am. I actually help plan the cul-de-sac we live in. Wow, nice work. Why does it all look like shit, Brian? <laughs> yeah, kinda took after the footsteps of my old man. He was a general contractor too? The best. He practically built half of this town with his bare hands. And I, I'm not talking about his naked hands. He actually had bare hands. It's weird how you spend your whole life trying not to become your father. Then you wake up one day and there you are. <laughs> but I get to work with my hands and it pays more than enough to take care of my daughter. So it's an absolute dream job. For me at least. Hmm. That's impressive. Building stuff has always been my weak point, and as a dad, I've been okay with that. Until now. I must defeat him! I do have that patio furniture that I haven't put together still sitting in the garage. Okay, okay. Maybe I should look cool. Maybe I should cool it with the dad competition. Gotta keep it light. Tell one of your classic jokes. I don't know if he's ready for that. I don't know if B. Ryan deserves one of my classic dad jokes. I mean, they are off the hook chain. Ask about his daughter, stare him down, unblinking. <laughs> so, three-legged do dog walks into a bar. Okay, okay. Uh-huh. And he goes up to the bartender and says, I'm looking for the man who shot my leg. <laughs> Is that how it goes? Nope, but I refuse to admit it. Uh, yes. It it's, uh, it's one of those anti-jokes. Head. Anti-jokes? It's very avant-garde, you know. Oh, so it's supposed to be not funny? No. It's supposed to be fucking hilarious, you big old pile of sawdust. Ha! <laughs> sure, yeah, we go with that. I'll take a long sip of my drink. Awkward. 
See, we can keep things friendly here. This is perfectly pleasant. I could do this all night. As he's grinding his teeth into dust. <laughs> because I feel an innate need to impress Brian and prove I'm better than him. Obviously. That's the only reason. We think. Let's keep it moving. Complain about kids these days. Compliment his beard. I want to get out of this state. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here with Brian. He sucks. He's a big old pile of... Um, ask about his dog. Oh, I got the eggplants immediately. I want to go home. I don't like this date. Immediately nails it. So, you have a dog? Uh, sure do. Hmm, I can't quite remember what he looks like. Uh. Oh, he's a little corgi. Always has a handkerchief around his neck. Yeah, I'm not getting it. I think I might need a visual reminder to jog my memory. No, I don't want to go back to his house. If you happen to have any pictures of said dog, maybe on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think he's one of those guys like Wendy's dad from Gravity Falls and he's just so manly that even when he does normal stuff like banging the desk out of laughter the whole like fucking equator shakes. <laughs> Jack, if you wanted to see pictures of Maxwell, you could have just asked. Show me the goods then. Hopefully I see a dick pic on his phone. Brain pulls out his phone and flips through an entire album of dog pictures. Ah, oh, yeah. That's the stuff. What a good boy. I look around the room. This is like what it's like to be on Reddit. And take in all the kitschy decor. Looking for something else to comment on. There's a gigantic fish hanging above Brian. And I gesture to it. Cool fish. It's definitely fake. Brian! You're the- you're literally the fucking robot who's hammering in that no fun allowed sign. Mean. What? Really? <laughs> Everything in here is fake. That palm tree over there is just a ficus with just plastic coconuts glued to it. Hey, look over. He's right. Uh, but I almost caught something like that fish once. Mine was bigger though. Not not trying to brag, but I'm trying to brag. Of course it was. Oh, really? I know people like this. I've talked to people like this who constantly have to one up you all the time. Like everything they say is like like you tell them something that happened to you and they're like, "Oh, cool." Yeah, I did that one time as well. Something like that happened to me, but better. It's like, oh, I've been doing this thing and it's really cool. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, that's awesome. So have I, but mine has been going on longer and I did it better than you did. It's like, oh, I don't care. I just want to talk and have a conversation instead of having to fucking prove myself. Yep, I went on a boat trip to Hawaii maybe a decade ago. We were out in the sea for three days, catching fish, drinking beer, you know, guy stuff. Ha, ha, ha. We had a hot plate on the boat, so we could sear the fish right after we caught it. So I throw a little bit of salt and lemon on there. Oh man, bon a bony appetite. <laughs> That's some of the best food I've ever had. Cool, good for you, proud of you. That actually sounds amazing, I said, <laughs> lying to him. Well, it was the last day. Everyone had gone to bed already, but I was just out there watching the stars. Had my line out too. Ha. <laughs> That's code for my dick. Then all of a sudden it just starts running. Now I'm talking about my fishing line, not my dick. So I jump on the reel real good, real manly like, before it gets ripped out of the rod rack and start fighting with some damn thing. I'm out there for maybe an hour. Can't can't call to my shipmates. It's just man against nature. Finally, I'm starting to tucker the guy out. I get him up to the surface and finally get a straight sight of it. The biggest marlin I've ever seen, Hemingway-esque. I get it into the boat, single-handedly, of course. It's just fucking, I'm awesome. Uh. And you know what happens next. What happens next? Uh. The damn thing smacks me in the face with its tail, knocks me out. Wake up the next morning on the deck, the fish gone. <laughs> Never felt dumber. So, it got away? What you're saying is that you failed at something for once? I think there's another version of me that would have spent the rest of my life trying to catch that fish. Captain Ahab style. I'm sure Daisy would be supportive. Ah yeah. yeah, man. Fishing's the life. I haven't got enough lately. You go fishing. Actually, I have a confession to make. I've got a naughty confession to make. Wait, what am I doing? Why am I having this inexplicable urge to be vulnerable with him? I can't tell him that I'm terrible at fishing. I lean in close. 
No one can outfish me. I'm amazing at fishing. I'm the best at fishing. They called me Fisherman Jack. That's my name back east. Don't ask them though. They don't remember because I was too good. I'm simply the best there is. Uh, okay, since you're such a pro, I'm taking you fishing. You want to go fishing? <laughs> Wait, don't answer that. Yes, you do. We're going fishing. Oh, no. Oh, uh, I don't know. Come on, it'll be a blast. I know the perfect little fishing spot. I'll bring some beers. We can just sit back, relax, and reel in some trout. We'll bring the kids with us. Come on, you know you want to. I sigh. I've been conquered. And not in the good way. Not in the way that I thought these dates were gonna go. Yeah. Okay. Brian gives me an exuberant high five. Uh. The only good thing he did. Yes, maybe we'll see who can catch the most fish. Fish. Fuck! So I can get you mowing my lawn. You can try to beat me, but they don't call me Jack good at f catching fish. Daddy for nothing. That's what they call me. Jack good old reels him in real quick. Daddy. I'm spinning a web of lies that I fear will one day consume me, but it's okay. Charlotte's web was full of lies as well. Sounds like it'll be a scrap. Brian and I finish our drinks and head outside. Till next time. This is a great opportunity for friendship. I'm real excited. Kiss my bass, Brian. This is a great opportunity for friendship. Got the fucking eggplants. And also for catching more fish than Brian. You're krilling me with these puns, Jack. Fucking nice. Mull it over. You'll come around to the fish-related dad jokes in no time. Brian extends his hand and gives me a friendly but firm handshake. Crushes all the bones. But it feels good. I see that competitive fire in his eyes. This is going to become a whole thing, isn't it? Uh, he looks like Todoroki. Todoroki's father in My Hero Academia. You know what? You guys were right. And you guys were yelling at me to be like, No, go with Craig again. Go with Craig again. And I was like, No, I want to try out Brian. You were right. Shouldn't have done that. He's just a boy. Poor old fella. Once Brian takes over babysitting duties, Amanda walks home with me. She immediately plops down on the couch and flips on the TV. So, how was your hang with Brian? It was... okay. Oh yeah, he seems like a neat dude. I think so? I don't know. The guy loves a good competition. I can't be friends with, like, with people like that. I can, or at least I can't be around them for extended periods of time because everything turns into a competition and I hate it. But then again, apparently, so do I. What did you and Daisy end up doing? Oh, we hunted for treasure for a bit, but Daisy was really adamant about not digging without a permit. So we just watched some documentary about theoretical physics. I put her to bed and then sat around eating Brian's food. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. Oh, my girl. That's standard babysitting protocol, I believe. I really like hanging out with Daisy. She's super mature for her age. Fucking beard hair is going into my mouth. Yeah, Brian says he has a hard time relating to other kids. She, that she has a hard time relating to other kids. She kind of reminds me of you at her age. Although, she doesn't bite people as much as you did. <laughs> I can't believe I'm finally the cool older kid. Feels good. You gonna hang out with Brian again? That's the thing. He wants to go fishing with me. Oh. I told him I was an amazing fisherman. Dad, you hate fishing. I know. I'm kind of panicking. It's okay, because we're never going on that date. I'm sure it'll be fine. All you have to do is wake up at the crack of dawn and sit silently in a boat on a lake for hours on end with no promise of a tangible reward, your only companion being the fear and doubt you harbor within your heart. Huh. That sounds good. Fishing's fun. You remind yourself as the world darkens around you and you wonder if it's really you staring back at yourself in the lake's reflection. Or simply just the abyss. Yeah, laugh it up, Amanda. But you're coming with us. Huh. It is my constitutional right to outright refuse this order. Daisy's coming too. Well, hmm. I bet I could convince Brian to bring his dog. <sighs> Fine, sold, I'm in. All right, I'm bushed, gonna call it a night. Don't stay up too late, okay? You got it, pops. Nice, do what you love and the money will come. That's a good, good option as well. 
You sure know how to make a dad blush. I sure- Oh, that's Barry's voice! How did it take me that long to realize that that was Barry? Ah, oh, yay! Barry, I love you, dude! <laughs> Welcome. You got dads. Okay, we're going with Craig again. I've- I've learned from my mistake. I've learned. We're doing this. Don't trust gas station egg sandwiches. But maybe if you eat a super old one, then you'll end up getting worms inside you and they'll rebuild you into a stronger person. There's a reference. I really want to get some good quality time in with Craig. The last time we hung out, he was so busy with the kids and fending off flirty moms that I feel like we barely talked. Yeah, I didn't even get to see his rockin' bod. Ever since the first time we hung out, I've been trying to get up a little early for runs. I don't think I'm gonna be as embarrassing as last time. Maybe I'll even be able to catch up with him now. I type out a message to him on Dadbook. What's this message gonna be? Hey man, been training on my run game recently. Ready for round two? Craig responds almost immediately. <laughs> Dude, of course, emojis. Uh, I don't know why he didn't just send me an emoji rather than typing it out. Cause he's fucking cool, okay? Cool Craig Khan. That's his name. Another message pops into my inbox from Craig. <laughs> Let's meet up early tomorrow morning for my favorite morning activity. Brunch! I type back. Brunch? What's that? You run, and then you get brunch. <laughs> I call it b runch Oh, right. Craig and I agree to a time to meet in the morning, and I have a chance to spend the evening hanging out with Amanda. That day just lickety split. So, we doing pizza tonight? Again? Can we do like a salad night? I knew she'd want pizza. I said it earlier in the episode. Pizza! Fucking hey. awesome. Dad, are you on a health kick? I, uh, not yet? I formed the committee to examine the possibility of being on a health kick. They haven't returned with their findings. Well, she could get some pizza and we could eat something else. Dad, if you go on a health kick and I have to go on a health kick by virtue of being under the same roof as you, I don't know if I have the constitution for that. Don't worry about it. The committee is still out. I'm sorry, Amanda. It's time. I'm putting the foot down. I'm putting the daddy foot down. It's time both of us wised up and healthed out. <laughs> <laughs> Not if I have something to say about it. Suddenly, Amanda lunges for the phone before I can stop her. She has the pizza place on speed dial, of course. Amanda! No! You know not what you do! I yes, can I get an extra large pizza with chicken, bacon, extra cheese, and tomatoes? And a couple of the garlic sauce cups. Amanda, you're going a little north here. Oh, right. Can you maybe throw some leaves on there or something? Yeah, he's going on a health kick. Yeah, Rico, I know. It's tragic. I love how she knows the guy. She knows Rico. And Rico knows me. And our lifestyle. Amanda listens for a second. Hold on, I'll ask. Aww. Dad, is oregano a salad? Or oregano, whatever the fucking way you want to say it. Uh, oregano is not a salad. It's a herb. It's a spice. It's a flavoring. <laughs> Can't blame me for trying. Nah, Rico. I'm talking to my dad. We'll just go with the meat lover's fantasy. Sure. Say hi to the wife and kids for me. Amanda hangs up. Rico says hey. The food gets delivered, and we pop down on the couch to eat some fucking zaw, dude! Ah. Just be careful. Running is a gateway drug. It's a slippery slope, Dad. First you go on a couple of light jogs, and before you know it, you're converting the garage into a home gym and re renewing your subscription to some sort of weekly kombucha delivery service. Fucking kombucha. Question! Shoot. What's kombucha? I also would like to know. I have no idea what kombucha is, but it's always going around as a joke. For healthy people. Okay, so you aren't too far gone yet. I'm just giving you a hard time, Pops. I'm really happy that you're running more and caring about your health. I want to keep you around for as long as possible. Oh, thanks, kiddo. Speaking of which, I'm running with Craig tomorrow. Are you going to be able to keep up with him? Hey! Probably not. <laughs> we laugh and eat some more za. Then it's probably... Then is probably healthy in the name of carbo loading. I call it a night early so that I'm ready for tomorrow. Gonna work it off, pops. When I first started running in the mornings, it was pretty hellish. 
Now that I'm a few sessions in, it admittedly has become a little bit easier. Despite it always ending in me dry heaving over a trash can. <laughs> is that what the runner's high is? Just dry heaving? I lace up my tennis shoes, lace up my laces, throw on a t-shirt from right or side I went to 20 years ago and head out the door for a moderate jog. Craig is already outside the river strapped to his chest. <laughs> hey dude. He's dressed head to toe in color coordinated running gear. Wow. I look like a total schlub next to this guy. Hey bro. Morning Craig. River gonna be running with us? Oh. Best as she can. We're taking it to the limit, aren't we kiddo? Yeah, tiny bro fist. <laughs> oh, I know what that means. Craig hands her a stuffed toy, which makes her smile ear to ear. She's so fucking cute! Oh -ha! <laughs> That's Arnold, the capybara. Sometimes it's the only thing that'll get her to stop crying. Oh, I've been there. Amanda had a stuffed panda that she carried around everywhere. She would have a tantrum if we didn't try to wash it. Or if we even tried to wash it. It was gross. So, you've been running lately. Every morning for 30 minutes. I'm basically an elite athlete at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll try and keep up. So, where are we headed? Oh. Oh. I was thinking that we could do a couple laps around the park. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Oh. Then we'll do some hill climbs up a slope. Uh, okay, I can probably handle that. Mm -hmm. And then we close it off by doing some wilderness survival hike running to increase our agility. I'm suddenly struck with an overwhelming need to crawl back into bed. This sound okay to you? I usually like to throw some time murder sprints in there, but I'll go easy on you since you're a beginner. That uh sounds like something that I am physically able to do. Hey. Great, let's get started. <laughs> Craig and I finally arrive at the park. A few other lone joggers make their way around the perimeter, and River waves enthusiastically at everyone we pass. <laughs> it's a lot more peaceful in the mornings. Aside from birds chirping and river gurgling away in the stroller, it's pretty quiet. Alright, good warm up. <laughs> that was the warm up? Dude! <laughs> dude, let's start the fucking show, dude! But wait! Craig reaches into his bag and tosses me a water bottle. I fumble it, but thankfully he didn't drop it. You gotta hydrate, bro. Gotta replace those electrolytes, dude. I take a long drink from the water bottle and feel reinvigorated! Man, I don't drink enough water. Hey, you gotta get that. You gotta replace those electrolytes, man, and then you're ready for speed, momentum, accuracy. It's all about forward thinking, my dude. Hey, I look down and pick up Arnold, River's toy, and hand it back to her. Must have dropped this. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for looking out, bro. Hey. <laughs> you ready? <sighs> yeah. Hmm. Ah, she's asleep. We finally finish our however many teenth lap around the park. I'm breathing heavily, but I can't believe I actually didn't lose to Craig. He's even breathing heavily too, which makes me feel a little bit better. I look down at my shirt and notice that I'm drenched in blood because I'm bleeding from the chest because my heart has exploded. I didn't realize how hard I was running. It almost looks like a frowny face. <laughs> That's one. What? Hey. I'm just kidding. Good hustle out there. I'm really impressed. You're way better than the last time I launched you off a treadmill. Yeah, man, you really pushed me to my limit just now. Can't believe I held on. Oh, are you gonna do that in bed later, Craig? Push me to, um, to my limit? I'd be lucky that I can hold on. I hope so. I'm giddy for daddies. Sometimes you just need someone there with you to push you to your absolute best. I'm glad I could be that guy, bro. I actually had that when I moved here. First, I went to uh, the gym with Felix a couple of times, and one of the trainers there was helping uh, like coach us through some stuff. And I'd never done stuff with like a trainer before, and I realized that I was actually pushing much further than I would have on my own. Because normally I'm like, ah, I could probably give up here. Yeah, that's my limit. And don't push with the trainer there, and they kind of like help you a small bit. It really fucking works. <laughs> Who's ready for hill climbs? I know I am. <laughs> River, she probably just says blah. But I prefer that she says, BRAH! <laughs> Cause River's a cool little fucking baby dude! There's my little cheerleader. Jack, you ready? Uh, uh, uh. I go with the middle one. Cause I'm not too happy, but I'm not too displeased either. <laughs> you bet. Craig takes me to a separate portion of the park where there's a steep hill that seems to go up forever. I strain my eyes to see some other joggers at the top. So what do we nice. do now? <laughs> We run up that thing, dude. 
That looks like a lot. Hmm. Jack, there's two things you need to know about this hill. One, don't stop running till you get to the top. And two, Craig points to the top oh. of the hill. <laughs> That's not the top. Oh! <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> I finally reached the top of the hill after making my way past what I originally thought was the top of the hill. Once there, I hunch over onto my knees and gasp for air. My lungs are like daggers poking into my ribs. You can feel my heart and my ears. River, I'm having a moment. Please. Oh boy. Craig looks like he's taking a beating as well, huh? So he is human. Well, I thought he was a machine, because no one gets that sexy, by God-given design. It has to be manufactured. <laughs> Jack, you put your arms on your head and stretch out your elbows. It'll help you breathe better. That's a good thing! You gotta, like, stretch out your chest. It really, like, opens you up and you get more lung capacity. I do, as Craig says, plus it lets me show off my crop top a bit better. Oh, yeah. <sighs> I do, as Craig says, it feels a little bit better, but I'm still in agony. <laughs> Here. Craig tossed me the water bottle again. I hydrate like my life depends on it. Thanks, dude. Bro. Ugh, fuck, I'm all full of perps. I think I'm going to vomit. I think I'm going to say- Wait. <sighs> Alright, I'm okay. Phenomenal work, dude. You feel that lightness in your head? <laughs> that's the runner's high. Oh! That's it! I thought it was just, you know... Dying! Hmm. Wanna take it slow for a bit? I would like that very much, Craig! That would be cool and good for me! As we're catching our breath, River starts crying. <laughs> What's wrong, Sweet Pea? Do you wanna play with Arnold? No! I just wanted you guys to push it to the limit! I don't wanna go slow! I wanna see the Reaper! Craig looks around us. Hey. Oh boy! A man down, I think we lost Arnold. Oh no! River keeps wailing. Shit! Nice. I've abandoned my child! I've abandoned my boy! I've abandoned my boy! We gotta find him, dude! Should be simple, right? We just gotta retrace our steps. I remember River last having it down at the bottom of the hill. Mm -hmm. Craig and I jog down the path, searching high and low through the streets we go for the stuffed capybara. Arnold, where's your trousers? Which Craig takes the time to explain to me as a large rodent nat native to South America. Handsome and knowledgeable? Craig, you got it all. We get to the place where River might have dropped it, but it's still nowhere to be found. Looks like we got a mystery on our hands. We have to get to the bottom of this. I suspect foul play. Looks like this is a prime case for world-renowned detective daddy. TM. Oh. Dude, it's time for a bro adventure. A bro venture. <laughs> Literally this dad. <laughs> oh, I love this game. We high five and decide to jog back to the park to see if we can find any leads. So, it looks like there's a couple more places to check and some bros around here that we could interrogate. Sounds good. <laughs> Wait, what's good cop? Uh, who's good cop and who's bad cop? You know what, Craig? I'll be bad cop. I can't see you ever being good cop, or ever being bad cop. You're nothing but peace, love, and joy in this world. You're everything that's right with humanity. Well, I think that with your stature and overall resilience, you would make a pretty intimidating bad cop. No! But on the other hand, you do have an adorable baby strapped to your chest, so that softens the edge a bit. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> All valid points. I think you would make a great good cop because of your congenial attitude and willingness to try new things. But then again, I've seen how you get when there are too many commercial breaks during a show. I just want to fucking watch Game of Thrones in peace. Okay? So you have the potential to be a scary bad cop. I don't want to have to watch meat hell in three minute segments with five minutes of commercials in between. And they're loud! And the commercials are too loud! I just want to watch my shows in peace without people yelling at me to buy wiper fluid and stuff. But Brian would love that. Bro. Bro, case in point. Let's play it moment by moment. Smart. Nice. So, where to, bro detective? Hmm. To the fucking woods, dude! Yes, we weren't in the woods, but I just want to be alone in the woods with Craig. Who wouldn't want to be? That's amazing! 
I love the music. We make our way to the outskirts of the park. There are a couple of benches by the dense tree line. Looks like Robert's here all by himself. This also seems like the perfect place for our clues. Why, why is Robert here? Look for clues. Craig and I search through the outskirts of the woods, hoping to find anything that might lead us to Arnold. There are a couple of cigarettes and empty beer cans scattered around the thicket. This is probably the hotspot for edgy teens to hang out at night and say swears and stuff and probably do a little bit of uh, oh. But it doesn't look like there's any recent activity that might be capybara related. This might be a dead end, partner bro. We return to the woods. Let's interrogate Robert. Maybe Robert saw something. We walk over to Robert's oh. bench. Hey Rob! Don't call me that. Okay. Hi, Robert. Fuck. Mm. Don't call me that either. Mm, okay. Hey. Buddy? Oh. What are you up to? Oh. Thinking. This is my thinking bench. Uh -huh. I have to get a solid two to three hours of brooding in per day. Filling quotas. Oh. Have you by any chance seen a small stuff KP bar around? A KP bar uh -huh. is- It's a large rodent native to South America. I know. Oh. Did I say South Africa before? So, have you seen one? I... A stuffed one? Not a real one. That would be weird. Mm. Be good cop. Come on, Robert. The sooner you tell us what you know, the sooner we can let you get back to brooding. Oh. Bad cop time. Robert. <laughs> Robert, if you don't help us, I'm gonna put you in a headlock. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put him in a headlock and make him feel pain! Is that a threat or a promise? Huh. <laughs> I'm into it. Whoa, slow down. Hey. Back off. We return to the woods. Okay, let's move to another part of the park. Where are you now, bro? Let's go to the- Ah, oh, I want to click the playground! God damn it. We wandered out toward the grassy field at the center of the park. There isn't a whole lot to see, but there are a few figures camped out on a blanket. And the grass could hold any number of secrets. Matt and Carmen Sita. Let's talk to Matt and his daughter. Carmen Sita spots us from across the way and waves. She's sitting down with her dad on a sunny green patch of grass. Hey. We jog over. Hey, dudes. Hey, bro. <laughs> we just sat down for a picnic. Want some snacks? Hmm. Got anything to increase my glycogen reserves? Um, we have apple slices. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, tiny bro. I should be fine. Hey. You guys working out? Good day for it. Yep. I'm the picture of health and athleticism. Mm. Good transition, Jack. Say, you haven't seen a stuffed capy bar around here, have you? Mm. What's a capy bar? It's a large rodent that's native to South America. Wait a second. How do you know what a capybara is? You wouldn't happen to have had hands-on experience with one recently, would you? Tell me what you know! We learned to get about capybaras in the fourth grade. I think it's more suspicious than you know what a capybara is. Ah, fair point. Oh my god. What if I took Arnold? What if I'm the culprit and I just don't remember it? That would be a great twist! I've been watching too much TV. I quickly check my body for any Polaroids I might have taken. Have kept on my person to remind me of who I am or who not to trust. Good reference. Very good reference. <laughs> there we go. I saw Memento once and I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Good movie. If any of you haven't seen Memento, go watch it. Nothing. What if that's what I wanted myself to think? Don't trust his lies. No. Jack. Don't let them win. I, sh I shake off the thought. I saw a couple of squirrels over there that uh, by that three tree though. I don't know if that helps, but if you want to see some cute squirrels, you know, definitely where to check it out. <laughs> Thanks for the hot squirrel tip, Carmen Sita. Mm -hmm. Well, we better get moving. Gotta find that KP bar before River here has a breakdown. Hey. <laughs> Good luck. Let me get some of those apples for the road, though. Carmen Sita hooks me up with some fucking sweet slices, and we're on our way. We maneuver back to the field. Look for clues. I still want to go to the woods again. That's a great place for me and Craig to, you know. Get it on? We carefully comb through the field of grass and flowers. I can't seem to find much besides a couple of ladybugs and a nickel. While I'm looking, Craig calls out to me from across the field. Oh, that's good H2O. Fuck yeah! Hey, Jack! Oh, I jog over. Craig is kneeling in the grass, inspecting something. I approach. My heart in my throat as I lean over. Craig, I see it. 
This is Arnold's leg. I put my hand over River's eyes. No one have should, should have to be subjected to this senseless violence. My god, who or what would do this, Craig? I don't know. <laughs> he actually said I don't know this time. I don't know. But now I think we might be dealing with something beyond our grasp. You ready? I can't look at this anymore. I turn around, trying to wipe the image of the stuffing strewn across the ground from my mind. It's too much. I... We're running out of time. We may already be too late, dude. Bag and tag it. Let's keep moving. Okay, where are we going? Interrogate River. Good call. I called the suspect. I called the defendant to the stand. Hmm. Wait, let me try this. I've always... It's always the culprit you least suspect. I get eye to eye with River, who still looks like she's on the verge of tears. Just get in, just get in real close with her. Just, r that's as close as my camera gets. Wait, I'll pull it out and then just like... Get real fucking close with her. Hey! Good cop. Hey, sweetie! Believe me, nobody wants you to find your capybara more than me. But we need more clues. And I think somewhere in that baby brain of yours, you might have something that'll lead us to it. So what do you say, kiddo? Blah. <laughs> I turn to Craig. We're getting nowhere with the witness. We maneuver back to the field. Check out those squirrels. Where did the suspect say the squirrels would be again? The tree. Ah, there they are. I like how the fucking hearts came out of the side of the screen this time. Carmen Cena was telling the truth. These are some fucking rad squirrels. River seems happy. This may have bought us some extra time. Good call. Move on to another part of the park. I have dad juiced where we should go next. Back to the woods! I want to go back to the woods. I want to re-interrogate Robert. Time to grill Robert again. Oh Christ. What now? Be bad cop. Robert? I'm gonna keep being vaguely threatening until you tell us something useful. Whoa. Whoa. I told you I haven't seen a capybara. What is you guys' damage? Damn, again! We return to the woods. Let's interrogate Robert again! <laughs> Come on, Robert. The sooner you tell us, the sooner you can go back to brooding. Okay. We've been through this. Shit. No! Oh, fuck! I messed it up! You know what? I'm not having that. I'm not having that failure. I thought Robert would actually have some more information, but he doesn't. And we're doing this with Craig. No, not fucking head back to the woods! Christ! We're doing, uh, this again. Fuck's sake. We're doing this properly! Move to another part of the park. We're going to the playground. Here we go. We make our way over to a small playground at the edge of the park. A couple of kids play in the jungle gym while parents watch the nearby benches. Over on the benches, I spot a familiar face. Hmm. Try to calm River down. This is a pretty nice playground. Might as well get a couple of swings in. What about Arnold? Maybe having a little swing might calm River down. Might buy us some more time. Hey, you're right, dude. You're right. She's about to go nuclear. I'm nuclear! I'm wild! Sorry, whenever a song gets into my head, I just have to sing it. This might prepare her for the possibility of us not being able to find Arnold. Life is a cruel and tough. Life is cruel and tough, but at least we'll always have swings. That's true. Except every time I try to go to the fucking playgrounds anywhere, it's like, oh, only for kids. If we go in there, we can't go in anything because we're too old. See, no one prepares you for that in school. Everyone sits down and they're like, oh, algebra, X, Y, Z, whatever. But nobody sits down and be like, hey, one day you're not going to be allowed to be on swings in the playground. Reality hits you hard, bro. I take a suite in the swing next to her and immediately realize that I'm stuck. River seems to love that. Craig eventually helps me out of the swing because he's awesome and he's got some sweet, sexy man biceps. And we decide to get back to the investigation. Okay. Look for clues. Craig and I, two grown adults, walk onto the playground and begin examining it meticulously for clues. There's no forensic evidence here. No stray capybara hairs, at least. After searching fruitlessly for some time, we look up. All of the parents are staring at us. We smile and wave as we awkwardly sink away. Huh. <laughs> I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> we head back to the playground. 
interrogate Joseph. Let's see what Joseph's up to. We talk over to Joseph, who seems to be engrossed in his book. Nice. <laughs> Joseph, dude! <laughs> Joseph nearly drops his book. Uh, okay. <laughs> Good line, Aaron. Hey guys, didn't think I'd see you two here. Jack, are you exercising? Sure am. You know me. I just love to run and, uh, be healthy. That's kind of my whole thing. What are you reading? Oh. Oh, just a book on knots and rope tying, so I can go out of my boat this weekend. Lords of Arabia! <laughs> what? <laughs> Aaron, what? <laughs> For- oh, because it sounds like he's trying to murder people. For boats! Boat ropes! Right. Hmm. Say, he didn't happen to see a stuffed capybara around hmm. here. What's a capybara? Hmm. It's a large rodent that's native to South America. Joseph, think for a second. Hmm, haven't seen one around. Lawrence of Arabia. I'll tell the kids to keep an eye out. Your kids are here? Hey! Joseph looks around. Poor McDonald. What the fuck? Why? <laughs> they were here a second ago. Must have gone exploring around the park. Do you know where they could have gone run uh. off to? They're kids. They get into mischief sometimes, but they always come back. Um, uh, sounds a little suspect, Joseph. Where are your kids, Joe? Mischief, you say? <laughs> Why do I get the feeling that that was just Aaron's way of going into the the recording booth and said whatever the fuck he wants, and they were like, "That's funny. We'll keep that." I uh, wait. Am I being interrogated right now? Only if you did something wrong. What are you hiding, Joseph? Whoa, getting- kinda getting the third degree here. This is serious! There's a KP Barra on the line! I mean, you're more than welcome to ask Christian and Christy. I imagine they're having their ears to the ground on all the latest playground drama. They might be somewhere around the woods. Thanks, Joseph. We'll let you get back to your rope book. Uh, boat ropes! Okay, back to the wizardy woods we go! Clock's ticking, dude. Where do we go next? Uh, to the woods! We return to the woods. Joseph Twins must be around here somewhere. Uh... Are we interrogating Robert again? Uh, there's- there's nothing else. Hey! Huh. Hey! Oh shit, they were actually answering public. Fuck, I was missing the lines. Yeah, Robert, bro, do you know where they are? Oh. I do. A lot of people underestimate the senses of a man who broods. I saw them lurking around here a little while ago. Where'd they go? Hey. Ran into the woods. I'd be careful though. I don't trust them. But then again, I don't trust anyone. Mm. Not even you guys. Mm. Now piss off. Not even that baby. That baby's looking at me weird. Blap. <laughs> the baby just goes, Blap. Mm -hmm. I take that back. You're an old soul, kiddo. Mm. Thanks for your help, Robert. The woods! Go deeper into the woods. I stare into the depths of the forest. Who knows what could be oh. in there? Are you prepared for what we might face in there? I mean, are you prepared for what we might face in there? I'm ready, partner, bro. Hmm. You? Nope. But if it gets River to stop crying, I don't care. Let's do this. Nice. We start down the path into the woods, keeping our eyes and ears peeled for any sign of Arnold. There are no squirrels or birds anywhere. The silence is unsettling. The sun can barely peek through the canopy. It's colder here. Suddenly, we hear voices. I wanna do it! You got to do it last time! Craig and I come to a clearing where the freaky bastard twins are. Stop right there, twin amigos! Hey! And put your tiny hands where we can see them. Christian and Christy just stare at us. You heard the guy. Put your hands up! We're kind of in the middle of something here. Yeah, can you like come back later? What are you kids doing? Cutting stuff up. My heart is pounding. Is this... Is this the end of the line? Are they gonna fucking murder us? 
They have murder in their eyes. I've seen a murderer before. That's- that's two murderers right there. I step closer. I can't believe what I'm seeing. A pair of safety scissors lies in the dirt. And... It's Arnold! What have they done to him? Hey. Arnold, dude! <gasps> you heard the baby. Hand over the capybara! No fair! Finders keepers! Yeah, but... Buyers... Fuck you! No, not finders keepers. That's our property and you've desecrated it. Well, can you prove it's yours? Craig holds up Arnold's severed leg. Exhibit A, motherfucker! I have to look away. I can't. I can't look at it. You two got sloppy. You left evidence behind. I think you find that this leg here fits perfectly onto his body. Christian and Christy look at each other. They don't know what to do. How about a deal? You give us the KP bar and we don't tell your dad about this. Fine. She hands over the stuffed animal. And give us those safety scissors. They are clearly no longer safe in your hands. You've desecrated the law of safety scissors. If safety scissors aren't safe anymore, what have we got in life? What, what kind of code do we have? She hands them over. I'm glad we could figure this out. Come on, partner. Come on, sexy bro partner. Craig and I start making our way out of the woods. He turns around and calls back to the winds. Nice. And tell your dad to stop letting you watch true crime shows. You little assholes. With the KB bar back with its rightful owner, Craig and I shamble into a nearby diner. Exhausted from our adventure, we find ourselves a eh, we find ourselves a corner booth and settle in. That was a tough case, but we cracked it. We're different now. Changed. Did we get in too deep? We're changed men now, Craig. We skirted to the edge of the law, and we've seen what is in the void. I don't know if we can ever go back to normal, Craig. Hey. It's not in a hearty brunch can't fix. My stomach grumbles. I suddenly realize how big of an appetite I worked up. <laughs> brunch! Give me brunch! Oh. I have strong philosophies on brunch. You see, the first thing you do is divide your brunches between boogie brunch and upper class mimosas and eggs benedict brunch and grimy brunch. Huh, the give me coffee and bacon and cheesy hash browns brunch. Then there's a time and place for both. I think most of life is about figuring out which one you need. You got it down to a fine science there, Craig. So, what kind of brunch dad are you, Jack? I think I'm a fucking grimy bitch. I think I'm a big old grime ball. Make it fried and oily and clean the floors with a hose, and I'll be happy. Hmm. <laughs> a fine choice, but wait. Aren't you going on a health kick? Yeah, but I'm gonna run it off. Uh, I kinda wanna say that I lied, but I also wanna say that I carbo load because he knows these terms and that'll be good. Nothing like a mountain of Kirby, Kirby, cheesy mountain potatoes, O'Brien, refuel a run, right, bud? Right, old bucko, palo, there, chumaroo? That is not even remotely how carbo loading works. Fuck. He's on to me. I thought just saying the term would get me in there. I know that's not how it works, but. Fuck, he's fucking knows. A young waitress passes out menus as Craig situates River into a high chair. Is this your kid? Oh. You betcha. She's so cute. Hi, you. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, River might be my favorite character in the game. Hey, kid. Middle school is gonna be really tough, but if you can make it through that, you can make it through anything. Did you fucking life coach our kid? Seems like you're the most eligible dad bachelor in town. <laughs> Guess so. Anyway. Here's the thing about brunch. You don't do business during brunch. Brunch is a time for rela rest, relaxation. Restaxation, as I call it, and restoration. With those that you love. And while we're having brunch at a traditionally brunch time, the most important thing to do, dude, is to remember that brunch isn't a time. It's a state of mind. Oh. If you can't have brunch on your plate, you can always have brunch in your heart. You can keep that. You can take that with you, dude. It's a good one. I, uh, don't disagree with you, I just don't know if I can match your intensity. Ha, <laughs> I'll open your eyes, bro, just you wait. Hope you open up something else there, Craig. We order our food, and the waitress, and the waitress, after very blatantly hitting on Craig multiple times, eventually brings us our brunch feast. River munches on cereal right next to us, more or less managing to get it in her mouth. Oh, I'm so hungry, I've been recording for 
an hour and a half! Yikes! Sorry! Oops! <laughs> I gotta say, man, it's really great having you back around to hang out with. Things have been so busy with work and fitness and the kids. I just really haven't had time to go out and, you know, get to know people. With you here, it's like we're picking up where we left off. No problem, bud. No problem, chumaroo. I know the feeling, man. Moving into a new place could have been really rough for me, especially with Amanda going off to college soon. You're making this a lot easier. Craig smiles at me. With that awesome smile that he does, his whole just like... Man, I wish I looked like Craig. He's fucking awesome. Feels really good to go on another bro venture with you, dude, just like old times. For a while, I forgot about anything that was bothering me in life. And it was just you and me and... More coffee? I don't know. Oh, uh, no thank you. So, do you like... Work out? I don't know. Uh, yeah, mostly calisthenics, but I try to lift as part of the regimen. That's so cool! I've been looking for a workout buddy, you know- FUCK OFF! He's mine! I'm hitting at him! Fuck you! Hmm. I'll bite you! Uh, I wish I could help you out, but I'm enjoying brunch with my workout bro right now. Hello! That's me, workout bro number one! Fuck off! Sorry, am I being a bit too... Rude? A bit too, like, out there? I'm aggressive when it comes to my Craig. When it comes to my sea rag. My- my crag. Cause you're my craggy sharp rock, Craig. <laughs> well, if you change your man... The waitress slides a folded note to Craig and walks away. Craig makes a face as he reluctantly puts it into his pocket. That's the face he made. <laughs> we can't take you anywhere, can we? <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse, isn't it? The next time we hang out, you should be in the middle of the woods, where people can't interrupt us. And also, maybe in some different woods than the ones where the little kids like to vivisect things. And also where Robert isn't just brooding like a fucking werewolf in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Craig laughs. Oh. Man, remember all our camping trips back in the day? We should just go camping again. Camping in the woods, you know, go out there, get some s'mores, get some sausages on sticks, you know, maybe take our shirts off a little and, like, hang out. What? What was that last one? I don't know what you're talking about. Joshua Tree? Yellowstone? That was the best. Yeah, remember when we were out there and we took our shirts off? Oh, what? Sorry, didn't hear you. I'll give anything to do that all over again. Dude! We should do a camping weekend! Yes! Oh. Maybe take our shirts off a little. What? Oh, I don't know, bro. I'm an adult now. I have all these adult responsibilities. You know, like waking up and working out. I don't think I can just drop everything and go hang out in the woods for a few days, you know? Come on, dude. If you plan things right, we can do this. Craig, don't you ever do anything for yourself? Craig stares into his coffee mug, wondering if the person looking back at him is really him at all. Or if he's just let his life get ahead of him without looking in the mirror. I wonder if he even owns mirrors. I don't know. Does he actually know how good looking he is? Of course I do. Yeah? Like what? I... Sometimes I let myself have one scoop of vanilla ice cream before bed, but only if I didn't meet my caloric intake for the day. Oh. I don't know. And sometimes I let myself hit the snooze alarm, but only once. Craig, we need to get you out of those sweatpants and into a pair of fun pants. Dude, you gotta relax sometime or it's gonna kill you. Please come camping with me, it'll be so fun, bro! Mm -hmm. Every day, bro! I guess I could get Smashly to take the kids for the weekend. Oh. I'll think about it. Mm -hmm. We finish our brunches and head back to the cul-de-sac. Oh. By the way, great job keeping up today. Seems like you're already making a lot of progress. Ha! I'm probably gonna need a little bit of recovery time after this. Tell the girls I said hello. Oh. Bro, I will. See you, bro, detective. Boom! Fucking pound town right now. I say goodbye to Craig and step inside. God, I'm ready for a shower and a gallon of water and a nap. Hmm. I bet Amanda's still asleep. Oh. Okay. We've been doing this for a very long time, so I'm gonna leave this episode here. I'm not gonna get into any more story elements right now. The game just saved. I feel like that's a good place to stop it off and not make this two hour long episodes. But that was awesome! We went further with Craig and we learned our lesson not to actually go with Brian at all. If I just went with Craig with, from the start, we actually could have been further in the story and we'd be having a grand old time right now. But you know, you live, you learn, you lose sometimes. That's life. But anyway! Thank you guys so much for daddying it up with me today. If you liked it, 
punched a like button in the face! Like a boss! And high fives all around! Whoosh! Whoosh! But thank you guys, and I will see all you dudes! Yes, video! Daddy, 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 daddy